Hello YouTube, this is Sam from Tiger Schooling. In this session of the video, we are actually going to talk about the pelvic floor, in which the pelvic diaphragm will be also uh, included. But we'll talk about the pelvic floor in very much detail because after listening to this lecture, you won't need an other any other lecture to understand the pelvic floor and all the muscles that form the pelvic floor and everything in detail. Let's get started. So the pelvic floor is actually a funnel-shaped structure. It attaches to the walls of the lesser pelvis, separating your pelvic cavity from the pel uh, from your perineum. So above uh, above the pelvic, this pelvic floor, this is these muscles from the pelvic floor. Above it, you have got your uh, cavity, and below that, you have got your perineum. So below, you have got the so pelvic uh, pelvic floor divides this perineum and your pelvic cavity. And in order to allow for urination and defecation, there are few gaps in the pelvic floor. So there are two holes in it, like two gaps in it. The frontal, the anterior hole is called urogenital hiatus, which is a gap uh, and in the females, uh, vagina actually in females. And the posterior one, this, this hole is called as the rectal hiatus, which is a centrally positioned gap, which allows the passage of your anal canal. So we have got two holes. Now, if we talk about the uh, first, we talk about muscles of the uh, which is the main component of your pelvic floor or the pelvic diaphragm. It is uh, these muscles. Remember that uh, the pelvic floor is formed by two muscles, and the first one muscle is your levator and eye muscle, and the second one is your coccygeus muscle. The first one, levator and eye muscles, has three types of fibers. Remember, levator and eye has three types of fiber, the anterior fiber, the posterior fiber, and the medial or your lateral fibers. So first we'll talk about uh, the levator and eye muscle itself. So remember, uh, the levator and eye itself is supplied by the branches of your pudendal nerve that is S2, S3, and S4. So the liver and eye is, you know, in broad sheet of muscle. It is composed of three separate, I have talked about muscle. That is the pubococcygeus muscle, that is puborectalis muscle, and iliococcygeus muscle. So uh, in many books, you have, might have heard the word levator prostate or the anterior fibers are levator prostate or sphincter vagina, vagina which are actually sometimes the uh, muscle branches of your puborectalis muscle. So don't get confused with that, with that idea. So uh, in in main 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 thing is you have to remember that the elevator and the pelvic floor is formed by two muscles that is the coccygeus and levator and eye muscle. The levator and eye muscle has three uh, three uh, fibers three separate fibers. We name them as pubococcygeus, puborectalis, and iliococcygeus. Uh, the first so th th the first muscle we're going to talk about is your pubo-rectalis. This is, uh, you can see in this diagram, this muscle down here. You can see this one is on the left side and this one is on the right side, right? Let me zoom, let me, let me just show it like that. You can see this is uh, your uh, pelvis. As you go down, as you move it like that, you'll find out these muscles. You, can you see that? All right, let me, let me put it back. Okay, from, as you see it from down, down below, you can see this muscle is called the pubo-rectalis muscle. So the puborectalis muscle is actually U-shaped because we have got this one on the, this side and this one on the other side. So this is kind of form a U-shape. So the, your puborectalis is a U-shaped sling extending from the bodies of the pubis. You can see the bodies of the pubis. They are extending from the bodies of the pubis, pubic bone, pass to the urogenital hiatus, pass to the urogenital, this is your urogenital, pass to the urogenital hiatus around the anal canal. You can see right there around the anal canal. So it's actually it's a, a tonic contraction actually bends the canal, this canal anteriorly, creating an anorectal angle that is 90 degrees at the anorectal junction, where actually the rectum meets the anus. So get it. Uh, if somebody is asking you uh, anything regarding uh, the uh, and a rectal angle, you, you will be saying that this angle is uh, formed or in the, with the help of this puborectalis muscle, which is a U-shaped muscle. So the main function of this thick muscle is actually to maintain your fecal continence. During defecation, this muscle actually relaxes, which allow the fecal, fecal uh, feces to get out of your body. 
Uh, I have already talked about two muscles, uh, which are sometimes the branches of this muscle, or arise from this muscle, or uh, fibers of this muscle, which are, you know, sometimes people call it that some fibers of your puborectalis muscle, which we call the pre-rectal fibers, uh, form another U-shaped sling that flank the urethra in the male, and the urethra and vagina in the female. So these fibers are very important in uh, preserving your ur urinary continence, especially during abrupt increase of the intra-abdominal pressure, you know, during your sneezing. Now, second muscle, if we talk about, is your pubococcygeus muscle. You can see that muscle, this big muscle right over here. This is called your pubococcygeus. We can see it on the superior side. This is just these all muscles are forming. Your, this is also uh, the uh, uh, this is also the fiber of your levator muscle. We have talked about. There are three fibers: pubococcygeus, puborectalis, and iliococcygeus. So this is the second one, which is an intermediate, which is pubococcygeus. So the muscle fibers of the pubococcygeus are the main constituent of your levator ani muscle. They arise from the body of the pubic bone. Again, you can see that or down here. And the anterior aspect of your tendinous arc. The fibers actually travel around the margin of your urogenital hiatus. You can see down here. They actually, they actually, the fibers travel around the margin of the urogenital hiatus and run posterior medially. You can see, kind of go posteriorly but medially, like this fiber arising here and going meet on the medial side. Posterior medially attaching to your back there to your coccyx. You can see that going back and attaching to the coccyx bone. That is this. And the enococcygeal ligament. I haven't shown the ligament down here. Maybe uh, I have to use the connective tissue in order to show you the enococcygeal ligament. But remember, your pubococcygeal muscle uh, attaches itself to your coccyx and enococcygeal ligament. The last muscle, the last main levator in eye muscle is your, the iliococcygeus, this big structure, this is your iliococcygeus muscle. So the iliococcygeus muscle has actually thin fibers, which is start anteriorly at the ischial spine, you, know, you can see down there, it started your ischial spine, this is it, it started your ischial spine, this is it, and uh, and posterior aspect of the tendinous arc, they attach posteriorly to the coccyx, you can see down there, attaching posteriorly to your coccyx bone and the enococcygeal ligament again uh, same as the pubococcygeus muscle for the attachment okay so this part of your levator now is actual levator of the three its action actually is to elevate the pelvic floor and anorectal canal if somebody is asking you regarding the function of the iliococcygeus muscle you will be saying that the iliococcygeus uh, of the levator eye is actual levator levator means picking it up uh, elevating so this is your actual elevator which is iliococcygeus muscle so its action actually elevates the pelvic floor and the anorectal canal so this is very much important top, uh, point to remember and now we get to another muscle, which is the last muscle. Uh, we talked about the levator and eye muscles. Now we talk about the coccygeus, right? So some people, sometimes it's called ischiococcygeus, sometimes it's called coccygeus. So don't get confused with that. So these two muscles uh, kind of right over there. These are the your coccygeus, which are innervated by the anterior rami of your S4 and S5 muscle. So the coccygeus, or sometimes ischiococcygeus, is actually the smaller and most posterior pelvic floor you remember we went from anterior to posterior so this is the most posterior component as the liver and I are situated anteriorly we, we have seen that so it actually originates from your ischial spine these are your ischial spine on the bony marks arise from your ischial spine and travel to the lateral aspect of your sacrum you can if I can show you posteriorly this is your sacrum attaching on the posterior the sacrum and coccyx on the downside you have got coccyx along the sacrospinous ligament which I haven't shown in this diagram. So these all muscles uh, kind of form your uh, what we call the pelvic diaphragm or pelvic floor. So this is it regarding the muscles of uh, uh, what we call it the pelvic floor, pelvic diaphragm and the pelvis and forming the pelvic floor. So uh, for next video please keep visiting Tiges Schooling and uh, visit our website that is www.tigeschooling.com and please make sure to subscribe to our channel to get more updated with our anatomical video. See you next time. Goodbye.